The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has taken the world by storm. The sheer amount of choices the player has in terms of dealing with any situation is truly what makes this game wonderful. You can go in swinging your sword like a madman, bomb your opponents from above, crush them with large boulders, or combine all your options to create some truly unique combat scenarios. By far though, the most interesting abilities that Link has stem from an ancient device called the Sheikah Slate. The Sheikah have always been a mysterious race within the Zelda universe, but in Breath of the Wild, their capabilities are truly out of this world. Within this small device, Link has powers that aren't quite readily available in this land of Hyrule. Powers that dabble on the edge between scientific marvels and mighty magic. In this video, we're going to crack down on one of those abilities and dissect how something like this could function. Of course, this falls into the realm of trying to rationalize games. So before you take up arms on your keyboard, keep in mind this is all hypothetical and for fun. Now that you've all put down your pitchforks, let's take a closer look at the science behind the Sheikah Slate, Magnetism Edition. One of the abilities unlocked in Breath of the Wild is the Sheikah Slate's Magnesis. At its core, it's a combination of the word magnet and an abridged form of the suffix kinesis, which means movement. Of course, like the name implies, this allows Link to gain control over metal objects through a giant beam of energy. It's like having a large junkyard crane in your pocket, perfect for that science fair project you've been putting off. Link is free to move these objects around, lift them high into the air, swing them into enemies, and at any given time, sever the object from his magnetic ties, causing it to plummet to the earth. This ability is extremely helpful throughout the game, but after using it over and over, your mind goes to one question. How does this thing work? Is it simply crazy voodoo magic for objects, or is there actually a science behind what is going on? Since the Sheikah seem to be more practical in their ways, leaning towards more logic and scientific discoveries instead of relying solely on magic, it would make sense that the Sheikah Slate was built on the premise of science as well. Plus, if we just rule it out as magic, that ruins all the fun. So let's try to rationalize what is going on here. Starting off, let's talk magnets. Judging by the name of the ability and the icon, it's very clear that magnetism is the driving force behind this power. However, slapping a magnet label on it still doesn't explain the functionality. For starters, magnets all contain a magnetic field. Think of it as an orbital globe around the magnet, and any objects within this field are under the influence of the magnet. The closer to the magnet the object is, the more influence it has, and any objects within this field are under the influence of the magnet. Materials that are highly attracted to magnets are labeled as ferromagnetic, and the objects you are able to grab in Breath of the Wild fall under this category. Simply saying that the Sheikah Slate is a powerful magnet creates a lot of problems though. For one, it is only magnetized in what appears to be a curved line. Secondly, the amount of power needed to move metal crates and rocks of this size would be pretty hefty, especially given how far away these objects are. The magnet's strength fades the farther it is from the source, and this act of fading is what scientists call an inverse square law. Essentially, the intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source which in this case, the source is the magnet, meaning the magnetic pull required to move an object at max distance from Link would need to be exponentially larger than if the object was straight in front of him. However, even with that in consideration, the magnetic force emitted from Link would not simply be in one direction. It would be omnidirectional. This would cause Link to magnetize all objects around him within range of his targeted object. With all the weapons lying around the game, Link would look like a voodoo doll every time he pulled this magnet out. Also, there's that brutal thunder too. It'd be like inviting death over for tea every time you decide to whip out your Zelda cell phone. On top of this, the object that is being magnetized should rightfully be drawn to Link. And that's one of the biggest issues with Link being the source of this magnet. The object we are magnetizing is staying put, and isn't being pulled anywhere. One would simply argue that this is less about magnets and more about telekinesis. Link was gifted a sweet new app for his phone from some weird crumbling monk, and we write it into the series as acceptable. But let's try flipping the scenario. Let's make the source near where the metal object is. To explore that concept further, we need to figure out how an object can be affected by magnetism without being moved from its position, but in that same front, be suspended from the air. When I was younger, I always watched tons of science shows, and I remember one experiment in particular that involved two large electromagnets side by side, where a wizard dropped a metal pipe between them. What was neat about this exercise was how long it took that pipe to reach the ground. 
as it was slowed down by the overpowering electromagnets on both sides. It was always fascinating to me, and perhaps these same principles, or at least similar ones, could be used to define Zelda's magnesis. Also, on a side note, I highly recommend watching some videos on Lenz's Law and electromagnetic induction, as they are pretty darn amazing. Anyways, slowing down an object doesn't really solve our problem. We need an object to be suspended in the air. In order for this to occur, certain parameters need to be met, but it still doesn't give us a clear answer. I'm sure by now many of you have seen devices that levitate objects through magnetism. A common one in particular are those levitating desk globes that you see in gift shops. A globe is fixed between a curved structure and it just hovers right beneath the top interior. Now, one may be thinking, if levitation was achieved with this specific object, could this same ratio be used for larger ones? Before diving into that, let's take a look at what is going on here. There needs to be a magnet positioned at the top of the globe, and an electromagnet on top of the curved part of the frame. Essentially what is happening with this object is that the magnetic pull of the electromagnet is being used to counteract the gravitational pull of the planet. What you're left with is an object seemingly levitating in place by magnetic force. However, the shape of the magnet inside the globe plays a large role in the globe maintaining balance. If this magnet wasn't circular and flat, the magnet could easily flip to one side and break this balancing act. This is where objects like the minecart in Breath of the Wild could become problematic, since they are so unique in shape. However, most important of all is the fact that there needs to be influence by an outside force other than just this magnetized object. While a setup like this globe allows an object to levitate under strict parameters, the electromagnet itself that is counteracting gravity would still need to be able to move freely. And beyond that, would need to compensate for any change in the object's state to maintain balance. Magnesis in Breath of the Wild works as if there is an invisible electromagnetic crane that is lifting the object up. It only affects the targeted object, and it also has the ability to work through thick walls. All these things sort of throw a wrench into how this could work in real life. The object moves as if it's being manipulated by the flowing energy established by Link, but it behaves as if it's being adhered to a powerful electromagnet that is connected to the surface. Nearby crates and objects that rightfully should be attracted to it in a logical sense aren't affected at all. With all these factors in place, magnesis is actually not all that magnetic. It is full of quite a few loopholes. Of course, we're operating on the assumption that game world physics attempt to mirror our own, which for Zelda certainly isn't the case. So while magnesis is a really neat ability, by our world's understanding of magnets, it's really just a glorified pipe dream. Disappointing? I know. I totally want to be a magnet wielding superhero. But now that I've dumped it on all of you, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Rationalizing game logic is actually pretty fun, so I'd like to hear your take on Magnesis or other Sheikah Slate abilities. What was your favorite of the bunch? And how did you use them in conjunction with one another to do some pretty cool things? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, or you can shoot them over to me on Discord. Also, don't forget that Swankybox recently split into two channels, as I'll be uploading videos over there as well. And with that, thanks for tuning in to this magnetic breakdown. If you'd like to join me on my YouTube voyage and continue to figure out the logic behind games, then the subscribe button is just what you're looking for. Thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers. You made it to the end of the video, but wait, your quest isn't over yet. If you appreciate the videos I make, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue to make more content for all of you. There's also my new channel, Swanky Box Nostalgia, if you haven't given it a gander yet. Regardless, I hope you enjoy.